What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a new video. We're gonna do a week in the life of a tanker driver. It's been a while since I did one of these. Let's do a week in the life. Let's get started. Really the only setup you need to know is yesterday was Monday and all I did was drive all day from Oklahoma. I was coming off a 34 hour reset. From Oklahoma to wherever I spent the night in Louisiana. Y'all don't need to see all of that, right? So obviously I'm pulling up to a tank wash right now, but not to get the tank washed. It's gotta get some work done. There's a trailer maintenance shop here. And apparently my terminal manager is gonna email them to tell them what needs to be fixed. So I don't even have to go fill out a drop sheet, which you want to make me happy? It's the little things. <laughs> the little things like, oh yeah, I'll just email them and I just get to drop the trailer and not worry about filling out the drop. I love that. What I don't love is parking these trailers at these tank washes. So what I'm looking at now, when it comes to parking, you see the width between the trailers on each side? That's what makes it hard at, at these places. Okay, let me show you. I've got an empty spot right here and it's really wide. It's like a trailer and a half wide, which is great. But you see this fuel trailer right here protruding out? That's where my cab would have to be. By the way, look at this dude trying to blindside back with no spotter. He's in a day cab, which makes it somewhat easier, but <laughs> hey man, more power to you. Back to my story. This fuel tanker right here is where my cab would need to swing. See how the Volvo's cab has to swing over? And he's pretty much on those trailers right now. See how his cab is moving towards the trailers to our right, which is his left? That's what would be happening to me. Now I'm gonna attempt this. I don't think it's possible for me to make it. By the way, he just gave up. He's like, there ain't no way I can get in there. I could have told him he wasn't getting in that spot blindside. Okay, I'm setting up right now for the for this back. There's just no, I mean, it would basically be a 90 degree alley dock type of back. I just don't see it happening under any circumstances. I can't get any kind of angle. My truck and trailer right now are barely like this. And now I got another truck behind me. All right, I don't want to hold him up just to demonstrate <laughs> packing. It's not right to screw that guy over. So let me pull it to the side. All right, this guy, I get it, bro. His truck is clean and there's a big puddle right to our left and he doesn't want to drive in it. So even though I'm on the side at a complete stop, he's like, in his head, he's going, please don't make me drive through that puddle. He's got a nice Kenworth W900, plenty of chrome and lights on it. He does not want to drive through that puddle. Okay, so I'm just leaving the tank wash. I dropped off the trailer and I'm headed home. It's 9 a.m. on Tuesday. My load doesn't pick up until 8 a.m on Wednesday. So I'll check back in with you tomorrow when I hit the road to get loaded. Well, good morning. Dobre. I am at the tank wash. It's the next morning, Wednesday morning at 5.30 a.m. And I'm looking for my tank. The numbers end in 103. So if you see it, let me know. I don't see my trailer, so it's going to be on the next row. I hope. There it is, in the far back corner, as far back as you can go. There it is, just sitting there all by itself. No other trailers around it. <sighs> all right, well, at least I found it. 
I'm at the super now. I checked in at the gate and now I'm in line for the scale to get weighed. This line is moving awfully slow. I mean, how long does it take to weigh a truck? I sat for five minutes before the line just moved forward. Like five minutes to weigh one truck seems a little off, but I don't know what's going on. And I woke up with a headache today. I don't know what y'all take. I take that powder, the goodies and BC powder. Every time I tell somebody that, they like recoil in horror. Ugh, it's so great. Yeah, it's gross. Well, it used to be gross. Now they make the flavored kind. If you can get the orange or there's another one, it's like fruit punch or ber mixed berry, assorted berry. I, I call it fruit punch. It tastes like candy. It reminds me of that stuff. I don't remember what it was called. When I was a kid, there was a candy. I'll try to find a picture and put it on the screen. There was a candy that was a packet of more or less granulated sugar with some food coloring and some artificial flavor added. And you would just eat the bag of sugar. It came with a stick that was made of sugar and you'd scoop it and it was pure sugar. I And then you'd eat the stick. I can't believe I'm nobody likes to hear back when I was a kid stories. So all I'll say on the subject is I marvel sometimes at the things that were acceptable <laughs> when I was a kid that just would not fly today. I kind of find myself in between the two generations that are at war. I'm 44. So older than me are the people in their 60s and 70s. So the baby boomers and the Gen Xers. And then below me are the 20s and 30s, the millennials and the Gen Zers, I guess they're calling them. And they're at odds. And I'm in the middle and I kind of see things from both ways. And the baby boomers and the Gen Xers can't stand the millennials and think everything they do is wrong and stupid. Well, I'll tell you, people older than me, <laughs> there's one thing that they got right. Feeding bags of pure sugar to children... <laughs> We should have never done that. <laughs> it's not good. So let me tell you a little bit about this delivery. You see that sign that's right in front of me? Let me zoom in. If you look at the sign, I'm right there where all those trucks are backed in on 45 degree angles. So I have to park here, get out and walk. If you follow that map, it's about a block. You see where it says shipping office all the way on the lower right corner. You walk there, give them your paperwork, they check you in, give you a security badge. Then I'm gonna have to pull forward, get on their scale, and they weigh me. And then I pull to the back and they unload me. Okay, I'm leaving the receiver or the consignee. This turn, you see how wide I'm swinging it? It's not a fun turn. And that gate isn't open 100% of the way, which makes it even worse. So I'm going to do the old truck driver trick of intentionally overshooting it. So I'm going to go right up to the edge of the road, stop, and then reverse. And sometimes you have to intentionally overshoot it more than once. Not, not here, not this time, but I have at other places and other times. Okay, we made it. I just want to show you how close. Let me show you how close my tires were. Okay, you see in that mirror, there's actually, uh, I don't know, two feet of clearance, three feet of clearance. So I probably could have done it without overshooting it, but better safe than sorry. Pet peeve time. When I was learning how to drive, I was taught that when you park, your truck, your trailer, and your steer tires should all be straight, pointing in a straight line. Now, when I see this Volvo on the left with his steers, look, man, I know y'all are going, man, you're just being picky, Jay. You're right. That's why it's a pet peeve. But I guarantee you there's a lot of other truck drivers out there who feel the same way. There's probably a lot of truck drivers out there going, I bet you I could tell you how the driver that truck was dressed. <laughs> now, I'm not going to get into the whole sweatpants and flip-flop thing on this channel um, because probably half of the people watching this channel <laughs> All right, I'm not going to go there. Uh, you dress how you want to dress. It doesn't affect me. I don't care. But uh, if you thought that, yeah, you'd be right. 
and that's it for this trip I had to blindside back in here in the moment I should have videoed it so you can see <laughs> but I wasn't thinking about it I was concentrating on the back it actually was very easy because well I'll show you why you can see the space next to me has a, a trailer in it but with no truck so all of this empty room right here makes it really easy to blindside so I was able to get in with no problem. So anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope that you watch the next one. I hope that you watch the previous one. I hope, I hope you have a great week. So until the next one, this is Jason signing out.